Well, good afternoon, everyone, and I hope everyone had a good weekend. I'm happy to, back, to be back with you today, and as our children return to their schools, I'm joined by our Minister for Education, Sport and Culture, Dr Alex Allenson. I, like I am sure many of you, took great delight in seeing people meeting up with their loved ones this weekend to enjoy the simple pleasures that make our island such a great place to live and work. This morning, my police colleagues informed me that the weekend went well. Bars and restaurants were busy with people happy to take the opportunity to catch up with each other. It was good natured with very little trouble. Thank you for this. And thank you for supporting our local businesses. As an island, we can be proud of the way our community has responded to this pandemic. Now that our society is back up and running, it will mean that more more than ever now, we must be responsible and look after one another. Today, I will share with you our plans for the next stage, entitled Stay Responsible. But more on that in a second. Today, it falls to me to share today's numbers with you. The total number of tests undertaken is 6,022. We have had 5,994 tests returned, which means that there are 28 people waiting for results. There are no new cases today, meaning that we are now on day 33 of no new cases. Our number of confirmed cases before remains at 336. We have no active cases. This weekend, for the first time since March, we did not publish COVID statistics or the graphs we have all become so used to. Eagle-eyed people out there will have noticed this. Now, this is not a sign of complacency, but a decision taken in light of a month without cases. Nothing more sinister than this. We will continue to provide these figures during the week, and we will, of course, issue an update at the weekend should one be needed. As an island, we tried to approach decision-making in as transparent a manner as possible. We published our Stay Safe Roadmap document some time ago so that you knew what we were doing and where we were wanted to head. We have approached the easing of restrictions in three clear stages. First, we asked you to stay at home. Secondly, stay safe. And today, we will be heading into, an, an, a, into the next phase of Stay Responsible. Now, despite a month without new cases, we must all stay responsible. We must be vigilant and we must prepare to act quickly in the event of new infections arising. To help you and so that we have a shared understanding, we are introducing five response levels. Each level has different actions that we will take to keep you safe. This document will be reviewed regularly as situations change locally and globally. It will help us understand how to react should cases arise and how best to limit transmission. We would always want to do this in a proportionate way rather than return to lockdown and measures which have had such an impact on your lives. These would only be as a last resort. I hope that we will never need to use this plan, but we must be prepared to act with speed and conviction if necessary. The details will be available to view on the government website this evening. Today is an important day for our schools. This morning, all children were able to return to their classrooms, and I'm sure this has come as a relief to many households around the island. I would now like to hand over to the Minister for an update on how today has gone. Alex. Thank you, Chief Minister. Today was an important step forward for our nation. All the island schools are now open, and this morning we had over 93% of primary school pupils back in their classrooms and almost 70% of secondary school students. UCM have helped their students complete courses and gain the valuable qualifications they deserve. I know the last few months have been difficult. Children were kept away from their friends. Parents had to step up to the challenge of homeschooling, sometimes whilst also working from home and teachers kept the hub schools functioning while supporting their pupils at home with remote learning. Schools are about so much more than books and homework. We recognise the power of play and how important social interactions are for mental well-being. 
Over the coming weeks, teachers will be working with their classes to listen to their lockdown experiences, bring them back into a structured routine and reassure them about their futures. Some pupils have missed out on important parts of their education and will need help and encouragement to catch up. Others may have actually enjoyed the experience of learning at home, of spending more time with their families and having the space to reflect on what is really important in life. Schools have altered to deal with the viral pandemic. Extra hand-washing facilities have been set up and there is clear guidance that if any pupil is unwell or experiencing any symptoms such as high temperature, new persistent cough or loss of sense of taste or smell, they should stay home and contact the 111 advice line. Extra cleaning schedules have been brought in and catering staff have been redeployed to help with this important role to keep our schools even safer. Because of this, packed lunches will be offered by schools rather than a full cooked meal for the next few weeks. Many schools have brought in more flexible uniform policies given the current situation and will work with families to ensure their children can experience the education in, a nor in as normal an atmosphere as possible. I would encourage all pupils to return to their classes. Your teachers have been looking forward to being able to welcome you back. They have missed you. But I'm aware that a small number of pupils won't be able to return due to medical conditions or anxiety. Please contact your head teacher so that they can support you. I would like to thank all the people who work in our nurseries, playgroups, as childminders, in the special units and our schools for their flexibility and dedication over the last three months. As somebody new to the department, I've been massively impressed by our teachers, caretakers, cleaners and catering staff who have managed to open up all our schools today, really for business as usual. But at the same time, we have to accept that the last few months have been anything but usual. We must be kind to each other to talk about what we've gone through and ensure that as we move forward, nobody is left behind. The department is currently working on a comprehensive enhanced summer programme to provide opportunities for our young people to learn and enjoy new activities. We will be publishing full details of these in the next few weeks. We will be planning for September and the start of a new school year so we can allow all our pupils to get back on track with their education and plan for a brighter future. I would like to thank parents for their hard work and patience over this very difficult time for our, for our island. I and the whole education service are committed to learn the lessons of what we've been through and make any necessary changes to improve how we teach, how we care and how we work with you in the best interests of every individual young person. Thank you. Okay, well, thank you very much, Alex, and please, please um, thank your department from me. And I would also like to thank teachers and all our other school staff, parents, and, of course, our children. This is a significant day for all of you, and I wish you well. Last Thursday, I talked to you about the three measures that remain in place. Our speed limit, our plans to exit the state of emergency, and our borders. Firstly, from today, the temporary 60 miles per hour speed limit have, has been lifted as we return to our pre-COVID situation. Any further discussions on the future of speed limits on the, this island are now a matter to be decided by Timbald. Today we briefed members on the path we will take to lift the state of emergency. And I can tell you that now I plan to invite the Lieutenant Governor to exit the state of emergency after the final regulations are laid before Timbald on Friday. The Emergency Powers Act was used to help pr to protect the population against the spread of the coronavirus. It gave the government greater flexibility through strengthened legal powers. The decision to invoke these powers was not taken lightly, but was deemed necessary to this extra in this extraordinary chapter in the Isle of Man's history. And that just leaves our borders. The continued closure of our borders is ultimately the thing that is allowing us to open up our society. We have created a Manx bubble where our schools are now open, our economy is gearing up and we can share a meal out with our loved ones again. My inbox is full with people asking me to keep the borders closed and we are listening. We are keeping a close eye on what does appear to be a steadily improving situation in the United Kingdom and many other countries, and I hope to be able to share the way forward next week. 
To be clear, we are not ready to open the border, but I would like to be able to give you some clarity about the path ahead of us on this. And please rest assured, any changes will be modest and gradual. Finally, I have been made aware of a party from Jersey who entered the island last week for work reasons. I can confirm that they arrived on the island legally. They had applied for and had been given an exemption certificate. This included an exemption from self-isolation subject to an adherence to strict protocols. The certificate clearly sets out the conduct required of the group while on the island. As part of the application, they had submitted a risk assessment and a plan of how they would protect others during their visit. This plan had been agreed with the Department of Health and Social Care. We are also aware that questions have arisen as to the party's adherence to these requirements. This is being looked into and the police may decide to look at this. The group have now left the island. We expect the small number of people that have been granted these exemptions to follow them to the letter. We will not accept excuses. For now, the Education Minister and I will take questions. And first we have today is Alex Bell from the BBC. Alex, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, a couple of questions for the Education Minister, please. Um, obviously, there has been focus, Dr Allenson, on um, a, a lack of communication and leadership over the course of this uh, crisis, as highlighted by the Public Accounts Committee. How much emphasis now an investigation has been started? How much of an emphasis does the department place on not being able to deal with the long-running union dispute prior to the COVID crisis as a factor in this? Yeah, I, I mean, I welcome the PAC's examination of what's been going on. Obviously, they are a scrutiny committee of Timwald, and, and that's, that's their job. Um, their report was produced in a very, very short period of time, and they perhaps didn't have enough chance to ask questions of the various teachers involved, their unions. They just interviewed the, the department. They found some problems in terms of communication. I think all of us have had problems in, with communication throughout this very difficult period. And also, as you say, they, they criticised the leadership of the department in terms of a clear steer, but accepted that this was on the background of almost 18 months of um, negotiations and some industrial disputes, and that communications had been difficult even before the pandemic. What we need to do now is move forward. Certainly, I have a very good working relationship with teachers and with their representatives. And once the state of emergency is lifted, we will be going back into negotiations with those unions to settle any disputes they have so we can move forward together. Well, I suppose what I was trying to get at there was if so much time hadn't been used up before this crisis came, and of course, admittedly, it was unprecedented, but if so much of the department's time hadn't been used up focusing on the industrial side of things, would there have been more space perhaps for better communication, better leadership when coronavirus became a present threat? I, I, I'd agree with you. I think any industrial dispute, any disagreement between an organisation and the people who work with it um, does, does lead to problems, does lead to spending time perhaps not focusing on our core role, which is teaching the young people of our island. And as I've said, I'm certainly committed to, to settling this, getting a fair settlement for everyone involved, particularly those, those teachers, um, to deal with things like recruitment and retention, which are now more important than ever, so we can move forward in terms of the education service. Thank you. OK, thanks very much, Alex. And um, next we have is Rob Pritchard from 3FM. Rob. Good afternoon, Chief Minister. My, my first question just regards anyone arriving to the island, full enough after what you said just before. I just wanted to know that, depending on which body would have to look at this, people arriving have to do their two-week quarantine. How is that checked, that as soon as they arrive at the sea terminal, they're actually going into quarantine and that they're adhering to the rules throughout? Right, well, when people come home, spot checks are carried out, calls are made to the people to see if they are in there and to see if that they're okay as well. And obviously, if um, they can't be contacted, then 
we have in the past sent the police officers around to check on the welfare of those people or to see if they're actually in the house. And I know, sadly, we have caught at least one person before who wasn't in the house and we had to take action. And then obviously we have um, people at the, um, at, at the borders checking um, when the boat comes in to um, ensure that all those people are, are go are, you know, have the right to come in and um, are going to the right location. Thank you. Uh, my second question, following the reopening of the likes of our pubs and bars um, since Thursday, there are certain businesses, I'm thinking of the likes of hairdressers and barbers, that do have certain legal rights to retain information for contact tracing purposes. Given the amount of numbers that we'll see through the doors like we did this weekend and possibly in the next couple of weekends or over certain days, what contact tracing abilities do the likes of pubs and bars have should they need them? Well, clearly there's no contact tracing there. Um, I, I remember, I've read an article in the Times today where a public in state and they had 100 people in the pub. We, 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 are, um, we have lifted the restrictions. Obviously, the restrictions on um, hairdressers, nail technicians, etc., will be getting changed, and I'm sure public health are working on that at the moment. But we cannot expect... Uh, well, now that we've created our bubble and we've got no cases on the Isle of Man, we can't expect our pubs and... Um, etc. to keep a, clubs to keep a record of everyone that's gone in the door that would be impractical hence why they are always the last to open um, but we're in a good place at the moment in time but we need to keep ourselves in that good place thank you thank you very much rob right and and now we move to amanda cashmore from jeff the mongoose good afternoon amanda Good afternoon, Chief Minister. My first question is for you. Um, we've heard a lot about a potential second wave, which could be devastating for hits in the winter months. Have you undertaken any modelling or planning for what impact this could have on our island if it did happen? Well, obviously, we've, we've got in place our um, testing regime, our, our contact tracing regime. We've got um, all the capacity and the plans at Nobles Hospital for a emergency breakdown you know for the second a second wave we have um the extra 50 beds at, at nobles hospital so everything is in place but we, we now are a lot wiser and more knowledgeable on what happened um, the first time we were, we were going through something that no one had been through before yes there'd been the sars virus etc but um, not as severe as COVID-19. So now that we've been through the first wave, we know what to expect if there is a flare-up. And obviously, with our contact tracing um, system and the fact that we, we have come up with this um, new document, Stay Responsible, clearly showing everyone what, what will happen should we, we see a number of cases again and the, and the different levels based effectively on the number of cases and uh, scattered around the community, etc., then I think we can work together as a team to react quickly and flatten down that curve pretty quickly where we shouldn't see a serious um, infection rate on the Isle of Man if everyone complies with the um, reintroduction of, of various um, events such as maybe one metre um, social distancing etc. But that's why we've come up with this document which we are sending out to all households on the Isle of Man so the people of the Isle of Man can see what is expected and what we will do should we see um, a number of cases um, flare up again on the island. And is there any modelling for that at this, at this point in time? Well, I'm sure our, our medics and public health will have been modelling um, the second wave. Obviously, there's concerns. If you analyse the um, flu pandemic in 1930, I think it was more serious for the second and thir third waves than the, than the first wave. So, yes, mm -hmm. our medics are looking at that and being prepared. But as I say, we have a, we're, we're well pre prepared. We've got the PPE equipment. We've got the capacity. And should we see the um, number of cases come back and, and increase and then we can react quickly. So I do not expect to have a worse case scenario than, than the first time. We can't be complacent. We hope we're not going to have any more cases, but with um, when you allow repatriation or key workers, etc., there's always the risk of um, people coming onto the island who have it. That's why we ask for the 14-day quarantine to make sure that they cannot go out and, and spread. And obviously we need to learn from um, New Zealand and we were also seeing a significant spike again in Germany. OK, and secondly, uh, Dr. Alison, you mentioned there that there were some children who were still staying home and didn't want to come into school. 
Will those children who are still missing school now not be academically falling behind their classmates who have now all gone back into school? And is there a way to remedy that in these next coming weeks? Yeah, I, I think you express what, one of my concerns, which is why genuinely I want as many children to come back to school as possible. Obviously, for those children who can't because of either medical reasons or because of quite well-founded anxieties that they or their family may, may have at the, this early stage of getting everyone back to school, we will be trying to support them. So what we'd like them to do is contact their, their local head teacher. That we do have a, a well-run system for dealing with people who can't come to school because of medical reasons, and that will be brought in to actually support them at home. I think it will only be over the next week or so that we re realise those children who may have an educational deficit, who may need to catch up, but actually a lot of children and a lot of young people have been working incredibly hard at home with their parents, with the resources on, on offer. So I'm hoping it's not going to be that big a problem, but certainly it's an issue that we are aware of and we'll be working with head teachers to try to address. I'm sorry, if there is, the, you do see those deficits coming through afterwards, how, how do you remedy that with those, those children that are still staying at home? I mean, a lot of the... Um, senior teachers and the class teachers are very good at picking up some of the clues of children who might be struggling and so what we'll be doing is perhaps giving them extra resources extra coursework to do over the summer really extra encouragement one of the things we need to do is make sure that children and young people feel secure at school but also that they're enjoying it people can't learn unless they're enjoying the the, the environment they're in and so a lot of the work this week from teachers will be about breaking down those barriers, re-establishing routines and getting children back to proper learning. Thank you very much. OK, thank you very much, Amanda. Now we have Paul Moulton from MTTV. Good afternoon, Paul. Pass the Good afternoon, Chief Minister. We're still social isolating, we're still separate. We'll come and meet you one day, yes? <laughs> we'll meet again, as the late Dame Virlin said. Now. Um, you've had some very good PR uh, over the, the, the last few days, um, making national newspapers and television about where we're up to on that thing. And I want to broaden this out to what you brought up oh, over two and a half weeks ago about the situation about Black Lives Matter and this re review into what was said on, on the um, national radio station, Max Radio. Uh, I'm not asking you to comment about that, but surely two and a half weeks for a decision one way or the other because what's happening is this is gaining legs every day that it goes on there's more social media there's people chirping in from the uk there's 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 um people wanting him to stay people want him to go you, you understand what i mean do you think two and a half weeks for a simple decision it seems a long time for for this to be sorted yeah, well, th um, thanks for raising that, Paul. I, I have had a number of emails on this very topic, and I, I just like to, I, again, publicly state that politicians can't get involved in um, investigations in, into the press. Um, we're not always the best of friends with, with, with the press from time to time, and we, we work together on the whole very well, but I cannot interfere with an investigation uh, bet um, between the management of Manx Radio and the Public Services Commission into comments made by a reporter. So obviously they want to do it thoroughly, and um, I'm sure they will have the results of... Um, any comments or, or actions, if any, that they're going to take. But as I say, it's not for me as a politician to interfere with, with, with the media. We, we value a free media on the Isle of Man, and um, I think that's something we should respect. As politicians, we're not always happy with the free media on the Isle of Man, but we have to respect it, and uh, I think it's an, an important part of Ireland's society. But, uh, do you think a result, one with the other, should be imminent, then? Yes, well, obviously, as you rightly say, um, the longer things drag on, um, the, the, the more um, upset people can become. So you, you can't rush it. You've got to show that you've done it properly. But again, I'm not going to tell um, the, the senior management of the radio station how to do their job in, in relation to staff, but I, I would expect a decision fairly soon. OK. And uh, uh, Dr Allison, for you, this re independent review of the Education Department uh, and what's going on there, uh, we've got this long press release that came out this afternoon, and I just find it interesting that you hope to have uh, the sort of first draft of this in a month's time, basically, by 31st of July. That's very fast for government, isn't it? And does that almost make it sound like it's already pre-planned, what's going to be found out? No, not, not at all, Paul. I mean, uh, first of all, this is an independent review and was set up by the Chief Minister um, in response to some questions by from Timwald members 
who, who felt that we needed to look in but very much at the structure and function of the department, how it worked with teachers, how it related to them, but also in terms of quality assurance, in terms of monitoring what goes on in our schools. Because at the moment we have a system whereby head teachers um, have an awful lot of autonomy in terms of um, applying the curriculum that's decided by the department. And I think that's absolutely right and it's done us very well. But now is the time to look again at that and, and actually doing it now after the experiences of the, the recent health emergency I think is very poignant. The co company that have been employed to carry out the review, which as I said is, is about the department itself and, and its role, um, are fairly confident that they can do this in a relatively short time scale. And what they're doing is using remote conferencing to talk to everyone involved, teachers, their representatives, the unions, also the department, to get as wide a picture as possible so that they can come back with some firm recommendations. And I welcome that. Uh, having that critical view, that, that hopefully um, you know, external validation of what we do, but questioning what we do, and perhaps coming up with better ways of doing it, I think is essential for, for the department to move forward. So you've obviously got to hit July Timwald if you want to get something through, otherwise you've got a long gap until October. Is that why it's so fast? Um, it, it, I don't think it's fast. They, they are fairly sure that they can deliver an effective report and recommendations in that timescale. Now, from my point of view, that, that, that report, again, will go to, to the Chief Minister. He, he will... Um, release that when, when, he, when he's ready. But over the summer, we're going to be making preparations in terms of the Education Act. Now, I'm coming back to Tim Wald for the second reading of this important bit of modernising legislation. The findings of the review may well feed into that. So it's actually, it's perfect timing then to deal over the summer with anything that they want or they feel should be changed. If um, the, the Chief Minister and Tim Wald agree with that going forward, then we can put that into legislation, which will come back to, to Tim Wald in October. So what I'm really hoping over the summer, Maria, is we can move forward as an education service, we can work with teachers, work with unions, work with an independent review, work with the legislation, really to, to be in a much better place for the, for the next um, school year. I yeah. think before I move on to um, Sam Paul, I think it's key to stress that this is an, an independent review. Um, and if they need an extra week or, or two, then, then, then they'll have it. I think what's incredibly important, as I've found out time and time again, if everyone's working together as a team, um, the Department of Education, Sport and Culture and all the staff working in that department, when that's working together harmonious, we get better results. And at the end of the day, we want good results for our young people. So it's really important that we have someone that comes in that's maybe looking at out of the, out of the box independently, look at what's going on, what's gone on, where there are areas that improvement can be made to rectify the situation, get everyone working together for the, for the good of our young people, then that's got to be the best way forward. It's independent and um, it, it will be published. And as I say, yes, if they can do it in a month, fine. But if they come back and say they need an extra week or two, then I'm more than happy with that because we want this to work. We, we, we want to move forward ha as harmoniously as possible. And uh, you know, I've, I've got lots of family who, who are in the teaching profession. I want this to work for everyone and I, I take, um, as an ex-union leader, I, I take it very seriously, a, a major complaint and I, I want it investigated properly. It will be. I've worked with this organisation um, before. They did some work when I was Minister for Health and Social Care and I do trust that they will give an honest and impartial report. Thank you very much, Paul. And now we move on to last but not least, Sam Turton from Isle of Man Newspapers. Good afternoon, Sam. Good afternoon, Chief Minister. First of all, start with uh, Dr. Allenson, please. It was a question that's been put to us by uh, sports groups in particular. As more and more sports are gearing back up again, the NSC sports halls have come up. I just wonder when they'll be available for use again. Yeah. Yeah. Um, our plans are obviously to open up the NSC as quickly as possible because it's a national facility and much used by the people of this island. All the outdoor facilities are open and indoor we've now got the gym area, um, the indoor bowling and also the um, squash courts open. The pool will be open hopefully by the end of the month. We're working on, on, on that and on the water quality. One of the aspects with the halls is that at the moment they're carrying out the really important function of storage of PPE for distribution right across the island, um, both in terms of nursing homes, um, the hospital itself, but also um, they're, they're, they're helping to supply dentists and get the whole health sector back on its feet. 
What we need to do now is work with um, the Department of Health and Social Care to see where else that can be so we can open up the NSC um, for, to its entirety. But, but, but again, we've been working very closely right across government to, to set up this facility and we'll be doing exactly the same so that we can get the NSC back to, to normal as quickly as possible. Is there any potential time frame on that at all? Or? Yeah. Are we having to be a bit realistic in terms of it will take a while to resolve? Yeah, I, I, in terms of a time frame, as I said, we need to work with the Department of Health and Social Care because the adequate storage and supply of PPE is key um, now and, and in the future. I hope we, we can rectify this within the next month. What we'll need to do is obviously relocate the stores, but also put the hall back into normal use. It's got a temporary floor at the moment, which will need to be taken up so it didn't damage the floor underneath. So there is a bit of work there to be done, but I'm fairly confident we can do that within the next couple of weeks. Thank you. And just a second to you, Chief Minister. The issue of speed limits. Now, the uh, national speed limit was again has gone back to effectively our Manx way forward of not having a national speed limit. But obviously, it is something that is quite a hot topic at the second. You said about Timwood will decide the future of that. Will you commit to a public consultation on that, not only national speed limit, perhaps speed limits in towns and centres as much as the countryside? Well, at this moment in time, we have no proposals to do that. I know the Department of Infrastructure, will, I'm, I'm sure, will no doubt look into it. I should imagine it will be a, a hot topic at the general election next year. Obviously, we, we do have thoughts on maybe um, speed limits in, in our heavily built-up areas to, to help people crossing the road, etc. Um, and, and ideas have been mooted. But at this moment in time, we're, we're flat out getting the programme for government going again, I've still got Brexit as well as coronavirus to, to deal with. So um, it, it's something that I can see being brought to Timwald at some stage. It, it may well be um, that we're looking at it next year now. So I'm sorry, just on that then, you said about next election, is that you don't perhaps then see it being something that could come forward in your administration at least? Well, at, at this moment in time, as I say, we're, we're dealing with an awful lot of issues. If, if a backbencher brings it as a private motion to Timwell, then of course it, it will be discussed. I know I'm answering a question on it tomorrow in the House of Keys. So we'll just have to um, see how that goes. I, I know an awful lot of people have very strong views on this. It was never our intention to bring in any legislation via the back door through the Emergency Powers Act. I was clear from that from day one. It was purely there to help us... Um, in our to ensure we had capacity at Nobles in at the very start of what we thought was going to be a really serious outbreak on the Isle of Man and we had to be ready and um, thank goodness we um, didn't have the outbreak that we were we, we had planned for we um, have come away relatively mildly unscathed by the terrible loss of 24 lives of, of our loved ones but um, let's see what what, what happens um, if, if it comes fine, I'm, I'm sure it'll be an election issue, that's, that's, um, that's for sure. But, um, you know, we've also got an awful lot of other things to be getting on with. We, we have lost three months on some of our really important issues that we need to catch up on. Well, thank you very much, Sam, and um, thank you very much for joining us this evening. Now, no one can say there is no risk, but your incredible commitment and sacrifice has given us an island that is as safe as it possibly can be. Have a great week, and please keep on making responsible decisions for you and your loved ones. Thank you all very much.